Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Node.js full tutorial series for beginners. In today's episode, we are going to learn about events and event emitter. I have told you that Node.js is JavaScript running at server side. Right? So for friends who are joining us recently on this particular episode, you know that JavaScript used to be focused mainly on the client side. But with Node.js, we have now started using JavaScript heavily as a server side programming language. Which, may, which means since JavaScript is mostly event driven, right? So it's obvious that Node.js has full support and, and events are first class citizen in Node.js. Node.js also has a class called event emitter, which is the most powerful tool through which we can configure, trigger, um, implement e events of any type and of any scale. We'll learn all about it in today's episode. Welcome back friends. My name is Sridhar. This is part 15 of Node.js full tutorial playlist. The playlist link is in the description box below. I have planned around 25 hands-on tutorials and live examples for you. Make sure you check out the playlist link, which is in the description box below. All right, so what you see on your screen right now are the topics we have covered in the previous episodes. If you are not really sure about some of these topics, I request you to kindly check out the playlist link and go through these topics because they are extremely important to learn and master Node.js. Today, in the last episode, we have also seen some of the core modules like file system, util, URL, parse, path. Uh, so today we'll learn about events, which is also a part of a core module, right? So Node.js has a core module called events, which has a class event emitter, which is used to configure, trigger the events, right? Impo events are the extremely important um, topic and functionality and feature of Node.js. If you're working on any serious web application in enterprise setup, you'll find yourself writing a lot of events. Now events can be configured to be triggered in a particular manner, right? How and where it has to be. We can also pass parameters, right? Using spread operator, which means it can take one or more parameters to that particular callback event. We'll, we'll see that now and let's get into hands-on. So if you have any doubts during the course of this tutorial series, drop them in the comment section. I will try and help you. Alrighty, so the first thing in the previous episode, we have seen and explored and learned about some of the core modules. Let's add it to that list and say today we are going to learn about events. So the first thing that we want to do is we need to require an events, right? So you'll imp uh, we need the core module, which is events of Node.js. Now, this is an important step. Remember, without this, it won't work, which is once you have created the event, we need to create a event emitter class, right? Object. So event emitter equal to, you'll say new events, this one, this events dot event emitter, right? Now you are saying creating a new object of event emitter class. Now, once you have it, then you will say event emitter dot on. This is nothing but defining the event or what uh, event you want to define and how it will be invoked. So what is the event here? I'm saying invoked. Now, a lot of people will have doubt that should these be JavaScript events, right? Should this be JavaScript events? No, they are not JavaScript events. These are, these are called custom events. Why? Because in JavaScript, there is no function by the name invoked. I can also call an event called arc or I can call it YouTube, anything, whatever you want to call it. Right. So these are my events. So I can name them anything I want. Same way you can name it anything you want after your pet, after your anything, whatever you want. Right. So once you have done that, you're defining and saying that whenever there is a event which is invoked, call this function. And this is nothing but ECMAS script, right? Which is nothing but your uh, arrow function. So now we are saying whenever there is an event called invoked, event, custom event invoked, right? So we have dis defined an event, right? So remember this has two step process. One, first event definition, right? So this is event definition that what it should do 
when it is in when when this invoked is not a great name um, say update uh, results update student or some event right so i'm saying whenever there is an event called update student you should call this particular method right so first is event definition what it should do second is actually calling the event right or invoking the event right that's the two step process so first we have defined what this function should do when you have a event called update student now we will call this and how do we do that we'll say event emitter dot emit this is a thing to trigger and tell what you are emitting here we are emitting the same name as this so now you are saying call this call this particular method now this emit can be called anywhere in the program right inside append file so i will show you that also now i will just show you don't worry we'll go step by step so first we will call it here and i'm saying emit means emit this event to the program and node.js will know that there is a this event was called so i have to execute this right now let me show you that first so see it says custom event invoked right it came here it executed it right now what i'm doing i'm taking this event emitter right and what i'll do i will call it inside the read file which we did it in the previous episode right so here i defined the event and i'm saying i'm calling it inside the read file so whenever the reading of the file is done event should be a uh, called let's see this so now if you see it has done all the processing 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 and finally it says custom event invoked right so that's because it's done after this operation similarly you can use it anywhere you want in append file after a particular um, any any so the idea is it's a it's a method you are calling you can call it anywhere inside class or in pass it as a parameter right so that's number two the third is optional optional is nothing but passing params right now you'll say can we pass parameters can we pass parameters to this method method callback method certainly we can do so how can we do that i'll say a comma b see if you see it is a three dot operator which means it's a spread operator right spread operator means it can take any number of arguments so here i'm saying a comma b and here i'll just print them out i'm not doing any processing just yet and here we'll just pass the values i'll say 10 comma 30 right a comma b 10 comma 30 this will go in place of here let's see so now you see custom event invoked then it is just printing 10 and 30 which is from this particular console log right so that's how you can define a custom event that's how you call a custom event that's how you pass parameters to custom events right i hope it's clear to you we can also call another custom event inside this particular event so how do we do that let's create it now i will say after updating the student read all students i'm creating one more reading all student data right so here what we are doing we are calling another method and where should it be called you can call it inside this and say uh, inside once it has done custom event just call another event right so now see i'm just sending the emitter update student it will come here it will execute this then it will call another event which is read all students and internally it will call second event so that way you can have chaining of events right now see so here we have custom event invoked then reading student data right which means it will come here it will call this particular event which is update student it will go here it will execute this it will find one more event calling it will go here so that way you chain the events right that that's how you chain the custom events chaining custom events or you can also say 
calling events inside events right that's how you can write different different events right i hope these examples are clear to you i hope you have gained enough knowledge on uh, the event and the event emitter because these are extremely important topic that you will work if you are really working with node.js application all right so that's all for today's episode we will see that in the next episode we'll explore about buffers and streams this is node.js full tutorial playlist if you like the series do hit like button do don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you so much for joining see you in the next episode